So if you could go ahead, if you would take your Bible and turn with me. Turn with me to Matthew, Matthew chapter 14. Now, as you're turning there, I've got to tell you about uh, my anniversary trip. So a couple of years, Adrian and I just celebrated our 10th wedding anniversary uh, on August 16th. So we just got back from Puerto Rico. That's where my mom grew up. So uh, we're trying to learn, yes, uh, Puerto Rico. Thank you. I haven't heard it. Not too many people know that. Uh, okay, you're a Puerto Rican. So my kids are Puerto Rican too. So, uh, uh, so we just got we just got back um, a couple of years ago. Um, our, a couple of years ago, we were getting ready for to celebrate an anniversary, and our babysitter last minute couldn't watch our show. Uh, I think that was like our eighth, so we said for year ten, we wanted to do something special. We know that we're go away, so I, my goal was I don't think we were for ten days. For a ten years, that was, that was my goal. So I called my in laws like two or three years ago, and I said I really want to do a ten. That's all I want to take care of. Uh, my in laws were in Canada, so I said, "Will you fly down and watch the baby for that week?" And they agreed to do so a couple of years ago. So this week has been, or last week has been on our calendar for quite a long time. Looking forward to the trip that we're going to take. So uh, on August fourteenth, I think it was, Adrian and I uh, got ready. We went and got close to the airport. We're getting ready to take off, and uh, we're getting ready for our trip. We're excited. Hey, this is a time we have four babies, one on the way. I was excited to get away from my kids. Uh, we got away from work for a few days, and uh, I was I was just ready for it. We go to Hobby. We get on the airport. We get in the airplane. And when we get there and we're seated and we're ready to go on the our vacation starts now. And we sat on that airplane for uh, 15, 20 minutes, and the pilot says, Excuse uh, me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a sensor that's not there now. Uh, we're going to get somebody to take a look at that and get that sensor fixed, and then we'll be on the way. Uh, 30 minutes later, uh, the pilot gets back on and says, Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to give you an update, but I don't have an update. Uh, and so then finally, after an hour and a half, they finally found whatever the problem was fixed, and we were on our way to Puerto Rico. This was in Uh And then uh, we get to Orlando, and uh, we get on a safe for flight. And when we get to Orlando, uh, we get on the plane, and then there's all kinds of storms. So there was a big tropical storm that happened in Puerto Rico a couple of weeks ago. You, you remember that? That was the day that we were flying to Puerto Rico. Uh, so it was starting to get Orlando. So we were stuck. Uh, in Orlando, we're on the plane again, and for 45 minutes, it says, just a few more minutes, and it's about just a few more minutes, and it's about just a few more minutes, and we'll take off. Uh, finally, after I think 45 minutes, we finally take off. So we're like several hours uh, late. So we finally land in San Juan. Uh, we had booked our, we had booked our car rental. And when we got there, I pulled up my phone, looked at the details, and online it said that our car rental company was open till 6. Uh, it was at like 5 30. Uh, so we go out and we're like, you know, we got to hurry because we got it off site. Uh, so it is off site. So we're out there waiting. We're following the instructions. We're looking for somebody who's going to come and, and take us to uh, the place to get our car rental, and nobody's there. Uh, I go all over the airport looking at Hey, can we get some time to take this person to get some work to And there's nobody there. So it's getting ready to close. I don't really need, uh, I don't really need money for not showing up for my, for my, uh, for my reservation. Uh, so we get an Uber, and we get the fastest Uber that we can so we can make it to the car rental place. And he shows up, he gets, he takes us to the car rental place. And lo and behold, the only car rental agency in all of San Juan, uh, that's the only one that was closed uh, due to the storm. So it was closed, there was nothing there, so immediately we had to get on our phone, and uh, I had to book it, book the same. Uber that I was in to get to the rental place to get back to the airport so I could try to find another car rental uh, place. So fifty dollars later, uh, for a five minute drive, uh, we got back to the car rental place. Went to went to the and they said, "Oh yeah, we can help you. It's going to cost. It's only going to cost about uh, eight hundred dollars for you to rent a tiny little car." And I was like, "We got to find something different because my rental was too." Uh, so we go. We're looking all over the place. It's getting later that night. 
that we rented that night. And then we finally find it, we find we get another cut on the set, the same amount of hour on the set. Yeah, we'll get you a cheap one, but we're going to give you this really high $1,000 paid on your card uh, for you to rent this car. But that can't be worked. So we finally go to another cut on the set. Uh, we get a decent deal and we're on our way to our, to our Airbnb. Our vacation starts now. Then we are on our way to the Airbnb and our host reach out to us. They were from back in Florida also and they said, hey, we just want to let you know uh, that your Airbnb that you rented, uh, there's no power and there's no water. So you can't stay in the Airbnb uh, where that you booked and that you paid uh, over $1,000 to go stay in uh, for the week. You can't stay there. So we have good news. We have another Airbnb that we run for a cousin, and you can stay there tonight because they don't have power, but they do have water. Uh, so you can stay there until uh, for, for a day or two, and then whenever the power comes back on, you'll take the rent it, then you can stay there. Uh, so we've got okay, great. So we drive, we drive over, uh, we're on the way, we can see he's getting, he's getting hungry, and uh, McDonald's was just sounding good for some reason. So we go, I mean, you know, it's the only place that was open. So we go into McDonald's, we go into McDonald's, and we get there, and it's funny, it's like, uh, I knew that I was in my, I knew that I was with my people because everyone that was working in the back uh, was just dancing while they were working. Like, he's explaining about all the work that they're dancing in the back. We place our order, and then, they, like, they take our order, and then the, the cashier comes back and she goes, oh, we don't have the caddy for that, but you have to order something else. So, okay, okay, so then we place the other order, and then she comes back and she goes, well, we have a caddy for your double, for your double, for your double quarter pounder. We, we only have one caddy. So we'll give you that. So I would like to go for a caddy. She likes her tiny little burger. Uh, we get to the place and we meet our Airbnb host, the sweet older couple. They say, hey, you know, we're glad that you're here. Uh, we're so sorry that this happened. Let's go ahead and get something to do. Go ahead and get your other two. You win. So we go up to the room, we walk up the first floor, we go in, there's no light, and everything starting to go good, and then we get to uh, the room that we're in there, they show us, and then all of a sudden we step in a puddle. We look down in the bathroom, it's just covered in water, uh, the, the bedroom is covered in water, the hallway covered in water, it's out into the living room, and the place is just covered in water at 11 o'clock in the morning. We've been traveling all day, uh, I think we got, we got uh, about 4 a.m., and uh, we, like, we start helping them clean up. So it's like, I don't know, I don't know where else to go in this, in this country. I don't know, I don't know what, what place to get. Like, I gotta sleep somewhere. So we're helping them clean up the, we're helping them clean up the water. Uh, we stay there that night. The next day we go to our actual Airbnb that we stayed in. They had no power. At the end of the day, at 10 o'clock at night, we finally got power back on. We heard the whole condo start to scream and shout and celebrate. Two hours later, we lost power again. So we were out with power the whole day. So like, on in that first, so like my mom, I, I like I talked to my mom and said, "Mom, what are we doing?" So we're trying to like get into some of the cool things about Puerto Rico. And then she's like, "How's your trip going?" I'm like, "It's good." We were three hours late on our flights. We had to pay fifty bucks for an Uber. We had we had to look at three different car rental places. We went to two different routes that were flooded and didn't have power. We got power back on, and then we lost it again. Yeah, I'm just doing great. And the whole trip, the first two days, was just getting me shaken up. How many times in our lives do we already just live our lives and things get thrown at us? And we're getting shaken up. And the situation after situation after situation that just shakes us up and shakes us up and shakes us up. And then finally, whenever it's time, this isn't my room. So I can't take it. And this is my auditorium that I was afraid of all this way. That's true. That's true. I've always had power. Uh, you know, a lot of times we face difficult situations. We just hold on to them and hold on to them and hold on to them. And then we let them get into play. But can I ask you a question this morning? Like, you, you guys know this about the topic in a lot of cases, but if I open it up, there would be a huge mess. Alright? It would be all over the place. It would stay all over the place. Now, here's the second question that I'll ask you. It's like, why would it stay all over the place? 
I thought you were going to say, because I took it. But I think that's not what I'm going to say. Because this wouldn't play all over the place because I took it. It's all over the place because I took it in the top place. Now imagine what you mean, I just couldn't take it that well enough to make sure that you can take it. But imagine what you mean, I have a bottle of water. And I took it, and I took it, and I took it, and I took it. What would happen with that type of book? It's all over the place. No, it wouldn't. It would be foamy, it would be sweet, it would be ready to drink. Why? Not because of the situation that happens to it, but because of what we're talking about. In our lives, we face the situation that we face in the sense of what comes out of us. It's actually just the other thing that we face in the sense of what comes out of us. It's actually just the other thing that we face in the sense of what comes out of us. Or, that's the other thing that we face in the sense of in Matthew chapter 14, Jesus uh, is facing one of these other things that we kind of take to the church. The church of the church was pain uh, and suffering for these two different kinds of things. It's not the suffering of uh, the garden of the church, it's not the suffering of the church. Uh, this is the suffering of Jesus and his uh, church. That's that. Uh, here in our church, Jesus is ministering to the church. Jesus, the teaching, we know that he is coming back. 
that he is, the privilege of the Supreme Suffering Service Center. No one might say that we have a high school to come and touch the kids of our children because he is he's he's completed in all things. Why can't we be our guests in the power? Still, we understand that he said that so much we know that he was coming to every temptation as perfectly as he was coming to God as he was coming to God. I was a person of the Supreme Suffering Sometimes I, because I recognize the truth, I have to forget the truth. And I forget sometimes that the way he responded uh, was not just responding as God, but he was responding to the situation and circumstances of the life of the as he was teaching. As the, as what humanity could be doing, such as as a human person, the way that human perception responds to every perception, to every so what I want to do for the sake of time is I want to highlight just a couple of how do I talk to the sense of 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 the sense of
paid after for a paid after for a wedding or a pastor, but it's not a price for the suffering of life. That's what we're going to do tonight. What we should do is that Jesus is going to take it for us. He's going to take it for us. He's going to take it for the fact that he's going to take it for us. The mission, the practice of the mission is incredibly important to us as a believer because it's a good start to the rest of the world. But the suffering of our world is a couple of other things that we have to do to the world. It doesn't have to be. Lamentation. One of the books of the Bible, we could probably spend some more time talking about it. Uh, it's the idea of just taking the things before God and saying, God, oh, this hurts. I hate the way that this is coming out. Nevertheless, not my way, but God's way. It's the practice of the mind. Uh, we also see uh, the practice. So we see the practice of lament, but then we're also going to see that it's the practice of uh, community, the practice of community. Uh, so what we see here in verse uh, number, uh, verse number eight, 12, they take, they tell, they take the body, they tell Jesus about it. Verse 13, when Jesus heard of it, he departed by sentence into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard there, they followed him on foot out of the city. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And with you, with compassion for them, and filled with joy. And when they were leaving, his disciples came to him and said, This is what Elvis said. Now, I find this really interesting because at first we saw that Jesus is going away to go be in the desert place. He's going to go process this moment out with his father. He's going to get away from the crowd. He's going to go uh, be alone. And then he says, you know, We know what happens. Like, everyone starts following after Jesus. They're going to go seek him out. They heard that he left, so they're going to go look for him. And I find it interesting that he speaks out, he's moved with compassion, he's going to talk about in just a second. Uh, but then I noticed something else that's really interesting. It says that as all of this is happening, his disciples are here. His disciples come to him. Lord, we're, we're in a desert place. So I find it really, really interesting that Jesus goes away to get away to be with the Father, but at the same time, he's still with his disciples. And I think that's something that's really, really important whenever it comes to suffering, whenever it comes to hurting, whenever we're in difficult seasons. Uh, it's because many times an unhealthy way to respond to suffering is to isolate. It's to isolate. It's to, it's to try to protect ourselves. It's to try to, try to heal ourselves when we were hurt. That person lied to me. That person did that. I'm going to make sure that I put myself in a position where I'm never hurt like that again so we isolate. You know what? I, I kind of open myself up. Uh, I open myself up to people that are trusted and then they turn their back on me. You know what? The answer is I'm just not going to open up. Uh, I'm not going to open up anymore. Let's stop to isolate. And there's a difference between solitude and isolation. Isolation is about just getting away for the sake of getting away. Solitude is about getting away to be with the Father. Isolation, there's no purpose. It's just self, uh, it's self-preservation. Solitude has a purpose. And what we see here is that Jesus, he goes to get away, but he's still in deep community. He's still with his disciples. He's still close to them. And what, what I have found is that in difficult seasons, in difficult moments, I go away and I talk to God with God. So then God does something really special in my brother and I take that and I process it out with other believers. I'm going to share a little bit more about it tomorrow, so I don't want to go into it today. Um, but a couple of years ago, Adrian and I walked through one of the most painful things that has been in the church's life and in our ministry. And like, I was in a church thing. It was one of those things where like, I, I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I had no idea who I was. Uh, I had no idea how to respond the right way. Like, I didn't think how to respond the right way. I didn't think how to do that. And I was told, I had no idea what to do. And I just remember uh, calling Pastor Wick. Uh, Pastor Wick and I was together. And I almost every week to talk to him. He seems to get back to me. By the way, uh, so we get together. And I just remember calling him and saying, hey, Wick, it's just going to be Like, he already knew what was going on. He just said, hey, Wick, it's just going to be a 
opposite. And in that moment, I'm thankful. I think Pastor Will told me, yeah, you're off game. Or you're overreacting in this, in this, in this piece. Or here's a healthier way to respond. And it's in those moments that I think to process things out healthily, we can't do it in isolation. We have to be able to have a sense of the
Thank you. 